Okay, let's uh, welcome the analysts uh, to the show. Kunal Shah of ICICI Securities and Rohan Mandora of Equity Securities is now joining in to uh, take some questions around how they would view uh, financials and banks from here out. Uh, this, of course, after the RBI put out the final guidelines for loan restructuring is, uh, uh, after the KV Kamath uh, Committee weighed in on the corporate side. Uh, gentlemen, thanks very much. Good to have both of you here. Kunal, uh, first up, your sort of uh, broad analysis of what this would mean for banking stocks from here. Yeah, so uh, overall yesterday in terms of uh, uh, the expert committee report uh, uh, which has uh, come out, uh, uh, in fact, uh, they have identified uh, uh, 26 sectors uh, uh, wherein they have suggested the financial uh, uh, parameters and uh, the threshold uh, uh, ranges within, uh, within each of uh, uh, the sectors. What uh, uh, we believe is uh, uh, maybe these 26 sectors account for more than 25% of the uh, bank credit and uh, the threshold ranges uh, uh, which have been defined, uh, they are also reasonably comfortable than the uh, sectoral uh, averages across various financial parameters, be it with respect to leverage, liquidity or uh, uh, serviceability. Bearing few of the industries okay, which were already reeling under uh, uh, stress. So, uh, to that extent, uh, uh, it uh, suggests that uh, maybe if uh, lenders uh, are uh, willing to go ahead with the restructuring, uh, uh, this uh, uh, report uh, or maybe the thresholds which have been suggested, uh, they would be more facilitative uh, uh, in terms of the approach rather than being uh, uh, restrictive. Uh, so, that is uh, our broad reading. We have analyzed... Uh, uh, 1,100 companies and looked at uh, uh, the various sectoral leverages and that is uh, where we are drawing this uh, comfort from. Uh, Rohan, uh, what, is, what, is, what is your sort of first sense? And if you can uh, talk about uh, groups of lenders where you now have maximum comfort, post the recommendations. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. So I broadly agree with what Kunal has said. Uh, the thresholds which have been mentioned are pretty facilitative in terms of allowing the entities which were either current or up to 30 days DPD as on 29th of Feb to be permitted under restructuring. So one key positive that we see uh, in this restructuring cycle is that RBI has been pretty proactive in ensuring that only those accounts which have been impacted by COVID are able to get the benefit of restructuring. The earlier stress is not take, not uh, coming into uh, the restructuring plan as suggested uh, in the uh, option. So, uh, the historically, the slippage that we have seen from the restructuring pool, we will see uh, my sense is it will be much lower from the, the restructuring pool this time. And that's where we think uh, the larger private sector banks, where uh, they have a reasonably good exposure on the better rated corporates, they would fare much better in terms of both slippages and uh, 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 restructuring. And also in this cycle, we see mainly pain, uh, except for certain specific sectors like real estate. On a broader sense, the mid-corporate is a space where we could see slightly higher pain vis-a-vis, -vis, say, the large corporate this time, unlike in the previous cycle. And also on the uh, NBFC or the uh, the retail lending piece, maybe the end, the vehicle financing is one pocket where we will see higher, higher challenges than the other segments. So, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. the stock... Um, uh, good morning, uh, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Kunal? Sorry, uh, just sorry to uh, interrupt. Uh, this is Reema here. Uh, Kunal, let me come to you. You said uh, you all have analyzed 1,100 companies. Could you tell us some names of big companies as well as sectors where uh, the restructuring norms would not be met? And hence, there is a risk of you know NPAs and delinquencies. Any numbers that you would like to put on the table for us in terms of your analysis? No, so uh, we had done the sectoral averages uh, uh, across the, uh, maybe the, uh, all these ad identified uh, sectors which are there. Uh, so when we broadly look at this uh, threshold limits and uh, then compare the sectoral averages, uh, most of them, uh, I would say, uh, bearing like uh, two, three sectors, uh, uh, most of them are falling uh, uh, within the range. And uh, even if I have to look at the debt component, Okay, so what we had done is like for each of the parameter, we had looked for that particular sector, what is the proportion of debt which falls within the threshold limit. And uh, when we look at it uh, uh, for say uh, segments which were being looked upon, be it in terms of real estate or uh, uh, 
be it uh, auto auto components gems and jewelry i think a major part of uh, debt is uh, falling within the uh, threshold limit there are few sectors uh, uh, wherein it's not coming so but they were already reeling under uh, uh, pressure so that includes uh, something like iron and steel textile construction uh, wherein uh, the current uh, averages are beyond the threshold limit but uh, we have already seen uh, Uh, the NPLs in uh, uh, most of these sectors, any which way, the incremental stress which was uh, anticipated uh, from few of the uh, identified uh, uh, sectors, I think that uh, uh, seems to be lower based on this uh, threshold ranges which are there. Okay, and which would be the sectors where we will see incremental stress? Because as you pointed out, sectors like iron and steel, construction, textile were already pretty much classified as bad assets. No, so uh, incremental. So again, uh, the uh, overall uh, uh, when you look at the circular, that also specifically says that it has the COVID-related stress. Uh, only for uh, sme zero accounts uh, and uh, we broadly know some of the industries which have got impacted okay be it in terms of uh, hotels restaurants uh, uh, tourism okay when we look at it uh, uh, even in terms of the uh, construction plus some of the uh, auto companies so and uh, obviously real estate which has been post a liquidity crisis uh, uh, going through some kind of a stress i think uh, uh, the only thing is uh, the recovery gets a further uh, uh, prolonged into uh, those sectors but these are like some of the uh, anticipated ones otherwise i think uh, uh, there are other sectors so when you look at it the report has also identified almost like 26 odd uh, uh, sectors as such some of them when we look at it we it like consumer durables fmcg pharma okay even though it is uh, highlighted in the report uh, um, uh, we don't think like there will be too much of uh, uh, stress uh, uh, evolving on the, uh, on those uh, uh, sectors uh, kunal uh, the supreme court takes up the interest on interest matter on the 10th uh, is that a big overhang So, so we will have to uh, see in terms of the uh, outcome for that. Uh, uh, so, uh, if uh, interest on currently the way uh, the uh, hearing is going on, in fact, uh, they have not yet decided in any which ways. Uh, uh, there is a restructuring uh, option which is uh, available, and moratorium is also now uh, uh, more or less lifted uh, uh, since the uh, first of uh, uh, September. so not very sure in terms of uh, whether uh, interest on interest uh, uh, will be uh, will be waived because banks are any which ways uh, putting in their uh, uh, presentation uh, representation as to uh, they are making payment on the deposits uh, so interest on uh, uh, lending should not ideally be uh, waived particularly on the interest component so we will have to see uh, how it uh, evolves uh, and uh, what is the final outcome uh the likelihood uh, uh, from our sense uh, the base case scenario it might not happen but uh, obviously if it uh, uh, if it is waived uh, then uh, bank will have to uh, bear the cost uh, uh, for 6 months of uh, uh, moratorium interest uh, so interest on that interest uh, will have to be borne by the bank so that will be uh, impacting the uh, financials uh, to that extent if uh, uh, the outcome is uh, not favorable hmm Yeah, I mean, obviously. Uh, so, uh, if uh, the court sides with the the banks, uh, there is no problem. But if if it is waived off, uh, then uh, probably I mean, it's not just the financial impact, but I mean, it's basically things like uh, intervention into business matters, judicial intervention into business matters, and things like that, which is. uh which maybe sets a bit of a precedent and that's why I sort of uh, may continue to be a overhang of course will depend on what happens on the 10th i mean the matter may get pushed forward more i mean the court may continue to hear the matter and not uh, uh decide the matter when it hears it on thursday gentlemen thanks very much rohan and kunal for joining in appreciate your time here and uh, good speaking with you we will take a very quick break here the first